Hello, it's Pat Zuniga here, and I'm proud to present my e-portfolio for Curriculum and Teaching 898. I currently teach at the Pasco School District at Stevens Middle School. I teach 7th grade bilingual English language arts and social studies. My teacher certificate is 4th through 12th history. I do have a certification to teach uh, middle school social studies, so I teach a, a block, two blocks of 7th grade bilingual ELA and social studies. One interesting thing about Isaac Stevens Middle School in Pasco, Washington is it's about 97% minority with a very large Hispanic, specifically Mexican-American population, uh, about 99% free and reduced. So the students uh, there have tremendous socioeconomic challenges, and it's part of the inspiration for my research in curriculum and, and teaching. When I began to research my curriculum theory, I wanted to address issues like apathy, lack of motivation, motivation unwillingness to engage, uh, choosing to fail, all of those which could potentially impact social mobility. I began to notice trends or um, um, relationships that existed in three areas. First, the individual and how the individual experience in the classroom and in school might create one of those things, lack, lack of motivation, apathy, choosing to fail, and so forth. I also looked at character. Now, this approach was based on a study I did a few years ago where I surveyed students in a school of about 700 students, and of the sample I got, which was about 85% sample, uh, about 80% of students considered themselves an athlete, but only 17% played school-affiliated sports. This led me to believe that self-perceptions of students didn't fulfill or didn't match with how people viewed them. Um, and so we, when we talk about character and what people think they are, um, it may not match up with who they, who they really, or how they really feel or how they really think. And despite the fact that we run great programs that teach character, uh, we don't provide structures that reinforce or build meaning for those. The other one, thing I wanted to address was culture and how the people that influence who we are send us those messages. And I narrowed it down to ways of thinking, acting, and behaving. So what explicit and implicit messages are people um, sending to one another through interactions, through systems of accountability, um, uh, um, through uh, pressure, peer pressure, through all sorts of different communicative ways that tell people what the, they expect of them or tell them what they should be limited um, in their doing. So as you read through this, you can see I've broken it down into the overall arching philosophy and the different components, um, the hope for outcomes, which is the collective identity. It's not so much of what you think you are, but or what a group thinks they are, but what other people think you are. Um, and then finally, it goes into my biography, and this is the kind of the overarching biography, but each supporting um, link has more information. The one thing I've I did include is my capstone project, which is based on my experience here at Stevens Middle School um, and how I ran parts or how I tried parts of this theory last year. Um, and then I also have it broken down by standards, and you can see all of those, which I'll highlight in here in a little bit. And then a little bit of a brief uh, biography about myself. So anyway, um, again, I hope you enjoy this presentation, and uh, please stay tuned for more information about the self-empowerment curriculum theory. So in this annotated bibliography here, I, w I wanted to do different studies of the individual and how culture impacts the individual and, and how character can become part of, a, part of a successful curriculum for creating a culture of achievement and how the interaction of all those within the learning environment is important. But first I needed to understand the individual and motivation. And this is where I came across the concept of differentiation. Now, I think that most teachers would do differentiation or do do differentiation uh, on their own. They may not have titles for exactly what they they are doing, or they may not even know they are doing it. But this artifact here shows 
the different ways that I differentiate it. Now, the the way that I began my exploration into differentiation is was using Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. I believe that the eight intelligences that do exist give a good way of kind of capturing how there's something for everybody in different learning experiences. And here you, here you can see a, a graphic that kind of has a learner describe what or make make a list of their preferences for learning. And then the entire document itself goes into different differentiation strategies, explanations, and things like that, um, as well as reflections. Uh, so this document in, its, in itself is one of the ways that I like to show that the individual is at the beginning and they're more than a statistic, they're a person. And this kind of led way into the human economy in that if we view the, the learner as a human if we can teach them to be a human then they can act then we can access human emotions like determination uh self-value uh, persistence perseverance aspirations things like that all positive things that help students become uh, not only better learners but more successful people The second area to talk about in the self-empowerment theory is the character or the desired character students are told they should have or feel they should have. Schools do a lot to promote character. They teach character. They use character words for the month, a number of different strategies. But what schools often don't do is create situations or paradigms in which students have to use those characteristics they have to realize that they that they have or haven't used them and then they have to talk about how it felt to them whether they used it or didn't use it and why or why not so in this picture here we have this seventh grade student who stayed after class and to many it might just look like punishment or it might look like a consequence or it might look like a student that is just trying to finish something. The story is of a young boy who told me at the beginning of the year that he was scared to take the state mandated tests. He was scared because he might fail. So the important takeaway from that is that he had aspirations. He had aspirations to pass the test. He was willing to do the things he needed to do to pass a test, stay after class. No one's no one's there. He's taking the test on his own. He did pass the test, by the way. Uh, and this is the learning environment that helping students acquire these characteristics. Uh, this is the type of that uh, learning environment that needs to be created. So if you look at the map of this, here you can see what a classroom might look like that is designed to help students acquire these. It's pretty simplistic, but there's reason to it. Uh, you don't want students to have to leave the room needlessly. So there's student lockers or cubbies within the classroom. There's a couple resources, resource lab, uh, uh, stations here. Uh, there's a computer on wheels for technological integration. Even a classroom paper and printing supplies so students can print in class. A whiteboard or projection screen. All of those are pretty matter of fact. You may or may not have those, but what do you have? You have students eager to learn, you have a knowledgeable and capable teacher, and you have time. You have all the as assets of the human economy in this room ready to take off. So there has to be logic be be behind where the student is located, what the teacher is doing and why they're located where they're located, and what they're doing with the time. Um, so here you can see the different areas or different explanations for all of the placement of the items. I even go into as much detail as such things as pencil sharpeners right here. I can't say that mine is 100% accurate, but what I can say is I've taken the time and other teachers who might agree with this theory look at, would look at this and say, yeah, there is logic to say the teacher's in the back of the room because the student is most important. The teacher is in the back of the room because that's the best place to have conferences about things like grades or to share um, certain 
uh, data points that needs to be mostly private. There's, I even go for, so far as to consider that capable teachers have predictive thinking. So, you know, troubleshooting needs to be something that we just is ingrained into our day to day that we're going to have problems with technology and to minimize the impact it has on teaching and learning. We need to be ready to troubleshoot or at least have a seamless process for troubleshooting to occur. All of these things need to happen within the learning environment for students to realize that they are acquiring characteristics that will set them up for success in a, a career or in a college or just in life in general. The final element of the self-empowerment theory is the impact of culture. Culture sends messages, implicit and explicit messages that indicate what is good and what is bad. For this, I analyze my own culture, uh, Mexican-American culture, and how I kind of became who I am and why my story is different than my dad's and my brother's and my friends. Uh, I grew up in a, a community that had uh, an, a large Mexican-American minority, and our culture is different. Uh, than many others and in the same in some ways so if you click on any of these we're here with speedy gonzalez and slowpoke rodriguez uh, one of them gives my voice overview the other one gives the actual video presentation with uh, peer comments but another one that i want to pay attention to or call attention to is the culture of online or of a connected uh, a connected classroom this is a culture that is brand new and one that we barely understand. And I think this is important because one of the biggest distractions I've noticed on teaching and learning is connectivity, uh, using the internet, whether it's for simple surfing or playing games online or technology such as text messaging or different apps for social media or just the messages social media sends itself. Uh, educators not only need to teach how to use those things, they need to teach students how to understand them. Uh, they need to teach them how to be ethical with them. And they also need to teach safety. So uh, this is another thing that I'm pretty passionate about when it comes to teaching and learning. It's how to use or how to use the power of technology, such as the internet, for good instead of, uh, instead of allowing it to dominate as something that is bad. For me, what's next is I'd like to continue to um, observe my theory as best I can in my classroom. I'd like to, the opportunity to instruct other teachers or districts about self-empowerment theory, perhaps uh, study it or part of it as a doctorate, uh, write about it and publish it perhaps, um, even work as an educational consultant. I've toyed around with the idea of being a curriculum director, but at this point, I don't know if I have the uh, desire to get the leadership classes I need for that. But again, uh, thank you for your time, for viewing the presentation. Um, I hope you gleaned something from it. Thanks.